بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته This is Riyad Razazi welcome you all to the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad uh, entitled Walking upon the footsteps of the Prophet Muhammad or walking with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam very happy to see you back sisters and brothers those of you on Facebook and those of you on Instagram Jazakum Allah khair for tuning in. Uh, today we are with episode number 11. Episode number 11 uh, about the uh, still with the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Yesterday we talked about the uh, uh, how, no, when Khadija radiallahu anha, the first woman who embraced Islam, and then uh, how, and then after, after, after Khadija, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Uh, um, uh, spoke to Ali radiallahu anhu wa to uh, uh, to Abu Bakr Siddiq as well radiallahu anhu wa arda. these are the very first people who embraced Islam you have Khadija, you have Ali, you have Zayd who also used to live with the Prophet Muhammad and then you have Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu wa arda. and I mentioned that Abu Bakr as soon as he embraced Islam he did not wait huh? He did not wait to become a scholar in deen to give da'wah, right? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu wa he did not wait to learn so much about Islam to become a scholar to give da'wah uh, to others. So right away he went and then he brought back six people from the Mubashirin of Jannah. Six people who were given the glad tidings that they were from the people of Jannah. Six of them, he brought them on the spot, you know, uh, one of them is Uthman radiallahu anhu wa rada, and then Sa'ad ibn Waqqas, Talha ibn Ubaidillah. All these, they came, they embraced Islam through uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad used to say that if you were to weigh the Iman of Abu Bakr, if you were to put the Iman on Abu Bakr on one uh, uh, scale, like on one hand of a scale, and then you put the, in, the Iman of the entire Ummah, the Iman of the entire Ummah on another scale, like on the other hand of the scale, Iman of Abu Bakr will outweigh the Iman of the entire Ummah. Abu Bakr. We will talk more about Abu Bakr sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So uh, this man who went and he, all the others, the Prophet Muhammad said, they all had to question me or they all had to, uh, uh, maybe some had to argue with Rasulullah. Abu Bakr did not argue whatsoever, didn't ask no questions. As soon as Prophet Muhammad told him, I am Rasulullah, and this is the revelation that I got, and then right away, Abu Bakr, uh, Rasulullah, he, he believed the Prophet and he embraced Islam. So, um, there were about 27 men who embraced Islam, 18 women who embraced Islam, in a matter of five to six months. Right? It, well, I would say, uh, no, in less than five to six, in about three months, you know, there were about 200 people who embraced Islam. Uh, uh, amongst them, there are some poor, the majority were poor. And there were some that were rich. Uh, Uthman ibn Affan was rich. Uh, Abdullah, uh, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, he was rich. Abu Bakr Siddiq was rich. But the majority were poor. Bilal embraced Islam at that time as well. Uh, there were some Shabab, there were some youth who embraced Islam as well. You know, there were a lot of youth, there were uh, women, there were men, there were elderly people. So, you know, it's a little bit of a, a mixture between, you know, youngsters and elders who embraced Islam. Uh, so now Prophet Muhammad, والسلام, he thought to convey the message to his family, right? So he invited them, he invited his family members. There were about 45 people, right? There were about 45 people who... Uh, embraced Islam, I mean, from his family, not embraced Islam, from his family, who Prophet Muhammad invited for a meal, right, for a meal to come in, and then he wanted to uh, sort of invite them to Islam. So after they ate, which is, here's another little bit of a, a tip when you want to give da'wah, right, you know, and you want to invite someone, you wait until you feed that person before you talk to that person, right? So Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, he fed them first, you know, and after finishing, you know, the food, and uh, as he was about to talk, and then uh, Abu, and then his his uh, uh, uncle Abu Lahab spoke up right away, 
right? He did not give a chance to Prophet Muhammad to speak. So Abu Lahab stood and started talking. اعلم يا محمد No, O Muhammad. إننا لسنا أو إننا ليس لنا بالعرب طاقة He said that we have no power over the Arabs because that which you're saying will cause animosity between us and the Arabs. And we have no power over the Arabs. That which you're saying, you know, to worship only one God, because they heard about it, right? They heard about what the Prophet was doing you know, and was saying. So when they came in, Abu Lahab was the first to speak. And remember, sisters and brothers, what I said in maybe in the third episode or the fourth episode, I, you know, I said that this is basically, you know, uh, this hatred, you know, the fact that they were so stubborn, you know, especially Quraysh, you know, his own family members, they were so stubborn about, you know, not embracing Islam. It was not actually, it didn't have anything to do with, with, with their Iman. They knew that, you know, Allah Azza wa Jal is the creator. They had that, that, that Iman. They had that Iman that it is Allah who, who is the creator, who is the doer, who is the provider, who is everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they had that type of Iman, but they lack the other more important type of Iman, which is al 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 uluhiya Tawheed al uluhiya you know, Tawheed al rububiya they had, but they did not have Tawheed al uluhiya What is the difference? The difference is Tawheed al rububiya is, you know, the uh, uh, to believe that Allah is the creator, Allah is the uh, provider, Allah is the one who gives life, Allah is the one who gives death. Allah says that in the Quran in many verses. If you were to ask them who created the heavens and earth, they will say Allah. So they believed in Allah. But the problem that they had was they instead of going to Allah directly by means of dua and prayers, they used to use those idols. So that's called Tawheed Uluhiyya. Uluhiyya, to worship Allah. No, they did not worship Allah alone. They had to associate someone with the worship of Allah. When they sought help, they did not seek help to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They sought help through the idols, you know. So Tawheed Uluhiyya, when you feel, you feel Allah alone. When you pray, you pray to Allah alone. When you make dua, you make dua, uh, dua to Allah alone. When you make tawakkul, you make tawakkul on Allah alone. So this is the, 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 the very most important type of Tawheed and and, and Quraysh had a problem with that, right? So um, they, they said that uh, uh, we don't have no power over the Arabs because this is a, an economical battle now. It's all about trade. And if they were to embrace Islam, that means they will have to destroy their idols. And if they were to destroy their idols, that means... Khalas, it will, it will uh, affect their tijara, it will affect their trade. And remember what I said, how many idols was actually put inside the Kaaba and around the Kaaba? Huh, brothers and sisters, those of you on Facebook and those on Instagram, I spoke about this, uh, I gave you this little, you know, this uh, uh, info a um, few weeks ago. How many idols altogether were stored inside the Kaaba and around the Kaaba? MashaAllah, more canis, Zakallah khair. Three, no, no, Sister Yashmin. 360. 360. 360 idols. And those 360 idols belong to different tribes. And the deal was, you know, if you were, if a Quraysh was to uh, put a, let's say there's a tribe, they had a, an, a, an idol that belonged to them. So they will take that idol, they will put it inside the Kaaba in return. Quraysh will do their trade freely. They will, they will, they will, uh, the, that, that tribe, if the, if the caravan of Quraysh was to cross, you know, and pass by that tribe, it will be safe. So it was, it was all about tijara. It was all about business. It was all about trade, right? So they knew that if they were to embrace Islam, they will have, they will have to get rid of all those idols, which means their business will be affected. So Abu Lahab said, we cannot afford to cause any animosity with the Arabs. Right? So Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, did he argue back with his uncle? Prophet Muhammad, he knew when to talk and he knew when to not talk. He knew when to react and when to stay calm. So when his uncle spoke first, Prophet Muhammad kept quiet. He didn't say anything. He did not give da'wah. 
Even da'wah, brothers and sisters. You have to know when to give da'wah and when is the right time to give da'wah and is the right place to give da'wah. Al-Amr bin Ma'roof wa-Nahi al-Munkar. Write down, write down. Take this note from me, inshallah ta'ala. This is Google I'm going to try to give you right now. Right? Take note. Right? So, Al-Amr bin Ma'roof and Al-Nahi al-Munkar. Enjoining good and forbidding evil. It has to be done in accordance with some rules. What are the rules? في الوقت الذي ينبغي في المكان الذي ينبغي على المنهج الذي ينبغي Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullah alayhi says when you want to give da'wah you know enjoining good and forbidding evil you have to pick the right time the right place the right words why? because you may want to enjoin good right? that your, your intention is good you intend to enjoin good but you chose the wrong words or you cho chose the wrong time, or you chose the wrong place. Let's say uh, you want, you know, there's a sheikh who's giving a lecture, and he said something that is a little bit controversial, right? And the sheikh is in front of people. There's a big gathering, and then and then maybe you had the answer, and then you started. You want to argue with the sheikh, with the imam, and whatnot, with the speaker, the speaker. Whether well, they just say speaker in general, maybe what ha what happened, you know. The speaker maybe will have a little ego that will kick in and he will not realize, you know, he will not realize that, uh, you know, or, or I'm going to say not realize, he will not admit that he was wrong because there's people around. So he will start making up, you know, excuses or justifications or just trying to argue with you, you know, although he knows maybe inside that, you know, I'm wrong, but because, because you pointed out, you know, his mistake or his fault in front of people, he may react. It will be like headbutting, you know. So you did not speak the right words or you did not pick the right place, nor the right time. The right time, right? Until he fed them. So my belly is full. Now I can listen to you. Don't talk to me when my belly is empty. I'm hungry. You can give me an admonition all you want. But my belly is empty. I'm hungry. I may not be an attentive listener. Right? I may not be an attentive listener. So this is you could use with your children, with your you know loved ones, with your friends. You know, use these tips about you know uh, giving advice. When you need to give an advice, you have to pick the right place, the right time, and the right words between husbands and wives. You, the wife could be right. Right, but then because the way she she spoke to her husband, or the, maybe she chose the wrong words, her husband will not accept, and he will start arguing with her. Right, because of the word the words she picked, or maybe vice versa. Right, so that's why you have to you know pick the right words. You have to be hakim. You have to be wise. Wisdom. Woman utiya hikmat faqad utiya khairan kathira. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever is being blessed with hikmah, he's been blessed with, with a lot of good. You know what hikmah is? Wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is to be able again to say the right words at the right time. Hikmah, hakim, wise. Is this the right time for me to, to enjoy good and forbid evil? If it's not the right time, then don't do it. Right? If it's not the right time, don't do it because that that good that you're trying to enjoy to enjoy to uh, uh, enjoy may turn out to be wrong, may turn out to be bad, may turn out to be against you. So when you want to enjoy good, you do it at the right time, the right place, the right moment, using the right words. So Prophet Muhammad he did not argue back with his uncle. He kept quiet. He kept quiet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "This is not the right time to argue." So he invited them again. He invited them again. There were less people, and he invited again his uncle Abu Lahab just to avoid, you know, hatred and animosity. He invited his uncle again, and he invited his, you know, family, 
and he fed, you know, for, uh, for a meal. So after, after they, you know, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, you know, offered them the meal, and after they, they ate and finished uh, eating, Prophet Muhammad jumped and spoke first this time. He did not want to give a chance to his uncle to speak. Prophet Muhammad spoke first. So how did he start? He started with Alhamdulillah. Ahmaduhu wa sta'inuhu wa staghfiruhu. Wa a'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Ma yahdihi allahu fala mudilla lah. Wa ma yudlil fala hadiya lah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahda. You know this khutbah, brothers and sisters, that you hear in Jum'ah? Brothers and sisters, are you there? Brothers from and sisters from Facebook and Instagram, are you there? When you go for Jum'ah, then the Imam starts with Inna alhamdulillahi na'hamduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu Praise be to Allah, we, bless, we glorify Him, we praise Him and, You know, you heard that before? Morkani, you there? Yashmin, you there? Who else is there? Hafiz Khan is there and Shaz Yash is there? And Fatima Karim, mashallah, na'am, she's there. And Um Taqwa, she's there. Alrighty, and Nawal, she's there. Okay. Zoe, wa alaikum hi. Right? So Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salam, he started with that. Before he spoke, he started with praising Allah Azza wa and glorifying Him. Right? Inna alhamdulillah, ahmad wa nasta'inu. وَأُمِنُوا بِيَوَتَوَكَلُوا عَلِيَ وَشَدُوا أَلَّا إِلَى اللَّهُ حَدَى وَلَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ And then he says, and then he says, and then he said, after he, he started by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, always, if, if you want to give advice, if you want to give a sermon, if you want to give a, a talk, if you want to give a, يعني, a speech, start with, بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. Start by glorifying Allah عز و جل, right? Making thana, praising him and glorifying him. And send in salutations upon Prophet Muhammad. Allah will put barakah in whatever you're trying to say. Right? Remember this. If it's an English speech, an English speech in front of people that are not Muslims, you can start with, you know, in the name of God, the most merciful, the most, you know, uh, compassionate. And I send my uh, salutations upon Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you think it's not, you know, uh, it's not, you know, maybe something uh, any wise in front of people, you can say it quietly. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulullah. But always start with sending, you know, with glorifying Allah, praising Him, and sending salutations of a Prophet. Allah will put barakah in anything that you say. And then he said, Wallahi law kathabtu nasa jami'a ma kathabtukum. If I were to lie amongst all people, but I will not lie to you. I will not lie to you. You're my family. You're my family. I will not lie to you. And then he says, Wallahi la ilaha illa ghayru inni la rasulullahi ilaykum. Khasa wa ila nasi amma. By the one who holds my soul, I am prophet of Allah, messenger of Allah, sent to you, O oh my family, you know, in, 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 you know, uh, khasa, and then to the wor whole world, you know, amma, yani to you privately and to the whole world, you know, in general. Not only to you, to you and to the entire world. I am prophet of Allah, I am the messenger of Allah. And then he says, Ya Bani Hashim, Ya Bani Hashim, they were all from Bani Hashim, you know, his family. Ya Bani Hashim. He said, Unqudu al fusakum min al nar, save yourselves from her fire. Ya Bani Abdul Muttalib, O Bani Abdul Muttalib, the other, you know, family, the cousins. Ya Bani Abdul Muttalib, save yourselves from her fire. Ya Abbas, O oh Abbas, save yourself from her fire. Abbas, his uh, uncle. Ya Safiya, my aunt, his aunt, save yourself from her fire. Ya Fatima bint Muhammad, save yourself from her fire. Fa'inni la amliku lakum min Allahi shay'a. There is nothing I can do, you know, for you if you were to be thrown in her fire. I cannot help you. I can help you now. I'm trying to direct you. I'm trying to, you know, direct you to the right path. But 
if you were to be thrown in hell fire, I will not be able to help you. You've got to embrace Islam. Sallallahu alayhi wa Ya Fatima. And then he turned to her, Fatima. And he told her, Oh Fatima, ask me anything you wish. Ask me from my wealth or from the money, anything you wish. But with regards to Allah, there is nothing I can do for you if Allah, if you if if you were to be thrown in her fire, or if Allah was to get angry at you. Other than that, ask me anything you want, I can help. But with regard to Allah Azza wa Jal, there are there is a, a, a very you know there is a line, there's boundaries that we cannot transcend. There are certain boundaries we can't cross. Al Abbas, his uncle. He put his head down and he didn't speak. Abu Talib, the man, again, the one who argued with him last time. Abu Talib. No, 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 no. That was Abu Lahab. Abu Talib, it is the his uncle who took care of him. He remembered Abdul Muttalib. He remembered his father. He remembered, you know, the grandfather of the Prophet Muhammad before he died. He told him to look after the Prophet Muhammad and to take care of him. So Abu Talib, he defended and supported Prophet Muhammad. He says, Imdi, go on with your thing. Go on. I shall support you and defend you as long as I live. This is Abu Talib. And Abu Talib, by the way, he never embraced Islam. Yet. He supported and defended the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I shall support you as long as I live. <sighs> Did anybody embrace Islam that day from his family? No. The women kept quiet. Hamza put his head down. He did not say a word. There was only one boy who stood up. There was only one boy who came to him and he says, I want to embrace Islam. Brothers and sisters, who was that boy? Those of you on Facebook and those of you on Instagram, who was that boy? All the others, they put their heads down. The women, the men, nobody wanted to say a word except one boy. Um Taqwa, you're right, Ali. Ali radiallahu anhu wa he, he came and he says, I, I, I will believe you, I believe in you. And then people started, you know, started laughing. You know, this little kid, he was about maybe uh, between 10, 11 years old, little kid saying, I, I. And then they, they started laughing at him. So he came and he said to Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, give me your hand. Give me your hand. And then he shook the hand of the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, and he said, I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but you, but Allah, astaghfirullah. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah, and you, O Muhammad, is the messenger of Allah. Allahu Akbar. Hada Ali, radiallahu anhu Allah. So now, they left. What would the Prophet do? I invited them. They did not embrace Islam. My family... And only a few other members for people, you know, embrace Islam. But this message, this mission, this message has to go through. It has to come out. So Prophet Muhammad has been given the order. فَصْدَعْ بِمَا تُؤْمَرْ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ In Surah Al-Hijr, verse number 24, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Prophet Muhammad, إِصْدَعْ بِمَا تُؤْمَرْ فَصْدَعْ بِمَا تُؤْمَرْ Go and convey the message. Go and convey the message. وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ So Prophet Muhammad والسلام, he stood up the mount, on the mount of As-Safa. You know, brothers and sisters, those of you who go for Al-Umrah, when you go for Umrah or Hajj, when you go to As-Safa, in the mount of As-Safa, this is the mount of As-Safa, when Hajar radiallahu anha wa rdaha, used to go for the Sa'i, ma bayna As-Safa wal Marwa, right? So Prophet Muhammad, he stood on the, uh, uh, the mount of As-Safa. Right? And people were there. And then he started calling, Ya Banu Abd Manaf! Ya Banu Abdul Muttalib! Ya Banu Adi! Ya Banu Fihr! Ya Banu... He started calling all those tribes. All of them. Ya Banu So, Ya Banu So, also So, Ya Banu So. He called by tribes and people are gathering. They all got gathered, you know, around Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, Ara'aytum, if I were to tell you, 
that behind me, behind this mount, there is an army coming to attack you. Would you believe me? They said, yes, of course we'll believe you. You are Al-Amin. Look, look, look. No, look. They testified. They testified that he was Al-Amin, that he was the truthful. Naam. أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَخْبَرْتُكُمْ أَنَّ وَرَأَ هَذَا الْجَبَلْ جَيْشًا يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَغِيرَ عَلَيْكُمْ أَكُنْتُمْ مُصَدِّقِينَ If I were to tell you that behind me, behind this mountain, there is a, an army coming to attack you, would you believe me? They said, yes. مَا جَرَّبْنَا عَلَيْكَ كَذِبًا قَطْ You never lied to us. You're known to be Al-Ameen. You're known to be Al-Ameen. This is how they say. And then he says, the Prophet says, فَإِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ he says, I am Rasul from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you. Rasul ilaykum, I'm a messenger of Allah azza wa to you. Warning you of adab shadeed. Warning you of a stern punishment. Then people kept quiet. People kept quiet. What? I mean, Muhammad, Ali Sattu Salam, Al Amin, he never lied. But now he's telling us he's a messenger of God. They all kept quiet, except one man, one man again, Abu Lahab, his uncle. Yeah, and if it's somebody else, all right, but somebody from your own blood, from your own blood, from your own family, your uncle stood and said, Tabbalak. Alihada jama'atana, oh to you. Is this why you gathered us here to tell us about this nonsense? Again, it's all about business because he was a businessman, he was afraid about his trade. Alihada jama'atana, right away, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. People dispersed. People dispersed, but Prophet Muhammad, he conveyed the message. He told them that he was a prophet, a messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed on behalf of Abu Lahab. From there on, you know, he was not named Abu Lahab. But Allah Azza wa called him. Tabbat yada Abi Lahab wa tabba. Tabbat yada Abi Lahab wa tabba. Ma aghna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab. سيصلى نارا ذات لهب وامرأته حمالة الحطب حمالة الحطب أن حمالة الحطب إن ون إن 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 ورش أن حفص وامرأته حمالة الحطب أو حمالة الحطب في جيدها حبل من مسد تبت يدا أبي لهب وتب كرست هي إز أبو لهب Curse he is, and he might be Abu Lahab. What up? Uh, brothers and sisters, what would the Prophet do after that? Would he remain quiet? Or would he go on and convey the message? Because that was the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to convey the message. So that's what he did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He kept on talking. And he kept on conveying initially, initially, but amongst these closer members of the family, among his closer, you know, friends and friends and friends. And remember, you know, he had help as well because Abu Bakr would go and call others and, and, and Uthman would call others and so on and so forth. 200 people embraced Islam. 200 people. Quraysh, there were about 3,000. 200 people embraced Islam. So Quraysh, they had to react. They had to counter attack. Because at this time, they left Prophet Muhammad alone. They did not harm him, nor uh, uh, they did not harm him, nor uh, uh, disturbed him or whatnot. Prophet Muhammad kept doing what he was doing. Right? So now, you know, Quraysh, they had to react. So what did they do? They had a plan. First, they started spreading doubts about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They used about five methods. 
about five methods. The first method was that they started spreading doubts about Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam. At tashkik. Sometimes they would say he was a magician, majnoon, crazy, insane. Um, uh, but they settled on Sahir. There was this man by the name of Al-Walid bin Mughiraba, who was the father of Khalid bin Walid. Right? Al-Walid bin Mughiraba was from the elite of the people of Quraysh. He's the father of Khalid bin Walid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed uh, 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 some verses from the Quran, from Surah Al-Muddathir, on behalf of this man. Because he heard Prophet Muhammad talking. So he went and he heard and he heard and he heard and listened and listened and listened. He knew this man was not fake. He knew this man was not a con. He knew he was speaking the truth. But remember, again, it was all about the stubbornness. It will, because it, it all, it's all about trade and business. It's going to affect their business if they were to embrace Islam and then destroy the idols. ذَرْنِي وَمَنْ خَلَقْتُ وَحِيدًا وَجَعَلْتُ لَهُ مَا لَمَّ مَمْدُودًا وَبَنِينَ شُهُودًا وَمَهَّدْتُ لَهُ تَمْهِيدًا إِنَّهُ كَانَ لِآيَاتِنَا عَنِيدًا إِنَّهُ فَكَّرَ وَقَدَّرْ فَقُتِلَ كَيْفَ قَدَّرْ ثُمَّ قُتِلَ كَيْفَ قَدَّرْ ثم نظر فبصر ثم أدبر واستكبر ثم قال إن هذا إلا سحر يؤثر إن هذا إلا قول البشر سأصليه سقر سورة المدثر verse number 20 from verse number 11 to about 27 so they said what should we call him should we say he's uh, is he witchcrafter is he a magician? Is he crazy? Is he a poet? What is he? What is he? He said, just say he is Sahir. He is a magician. He plays magic with his words. They started ridiculing Prophet Muhammad. Are you there, brothers and sisters, those of you on Facebook and those of you on Instagram? I've got Facebook here on Instagram right there. Are you still there, brothers and sisters? Are you following up? Are you following up? I'm just taking you slowly here, you know, telling you about some, you know, instances that happened at the time of the Prophet. This is between the, the third and sixth year after the, the, hij after the, the prophecy of the Prophet Muhammad, after the bi'tha of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right, so this is between the third year and the sixth year of the bi'tha of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, so Quraysh is reacting to the efforts of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Zakum Allah khair. I'm just making sure because I cannot see you. So at least if you're connecting with me, you know, through you know maybe your text, I can see that you're there. All right, okay. So they started, you know, sending doubts about Prophet or spreading doubts about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then they also started, you know, uh, ridiculing Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, ridiculing him, making you know fun about you know uh, of him. When Prophet Muhammad is making tawaf, they would just laugh at Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, brothers and sisters, today maybe they are making fun of you and I. Maybe they're making fun of you and I about, you know, uh, my, the beard, or maybe about your hijab, or maybe about your niqab, or maybe about your habaya, or maybe about your name, or maybe about your color, skin color. Maybe they're making fun, you know, about you and I, and ridiculing, and saying things behind our back, or front of us, or whatnot. They did the same about Prophet Muhammad before you and I. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. They said, وَقَالُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِي يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِي نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الذِّكْرِ إِنَّكَ لَمَجْنُونَ They said, you are majnoon. You are crazy. You are insane. Prophet keeps on doing his job. Prophet kept doing his job, but they kept on ridiculing him uh, Ummu Jamil, 
and 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 you know they was trying you know, you know making fun of him. Um Jamil, Um Jamil, she is the wife of Abu Lahab. She would take hatab, she would take this you know bushes and 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 you know and dirt and whatnot, and then she would throw it by the door of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Prophet Muhammad will come out in the morning and then he will see this dirt and this, you know, you know, uh, and whatnot. He will just so and clean it and he will say, is this how you treat your, yani your neighbor? I'm your neighbor. Even the Arabs, they had the notion of a neighbor. Quraysh, they were not Muslims, but still they had this notion of neighboring. You know, I'm your neighbor. At least treat me with respect. I'm your neighbor. Is it the right of the job? Is it the right of the neighbor? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Allah Azzawajal completed the revelation of Surah Al-Masad. وَامْرَأَتُهُ حَمَّالَةَ الْحَطَبِ فِي جِيدِهَا حَبْلٌ مِّن مَسَدٍ About the wife of Abu Lahab. حَمَّالَةَ الْحَطَبِ She's the one who's carrying that hatab on her back. Hmm. They used to call him Mudammam, not Muhammad, Mudammam. You know, somebody, someone who's uh, who's ugly, who's sick, who's whatnot. Muhammad, Mudammam, Mudammam. And he does not respond. He doesn't respond. The Sahaba did not, they were, you know, sad, they were angry. The Prophet says, they call him Mudammam. My name is not Mudammam. My name is Muhammad. They call him Mudammam. I'm not Mudammam. I'm Muhammad. Let them, let them call whatever they want to call. Hmm. But Prophet Muhammad got really sad as well because he's conveying the message to his loved ones. And a lot of them don't want to believe yet. Allah Azza wa revealed in Surah Al-Hijr, verse number 97. And we know that your breast becomes tight because of what they say. Make tasbih to me, Lord, and be from the Sajideen. We know, O oh Muhammad, we know, O oh Muhammad, that they are, your breast is tight because, you know, you feel bad, you feel sad of, you know, of what they say about you and about Islam and, and, and you know, and they don't want to listen and whatnot, but what should you do in return? Make tasbih, glorify the Lord, and praise Him, and be min as Sajideen, and do lots of salah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him to do. They also used to uh, uh, cause him emotional harm, emotional abuse. What kind of emotional abuse? They used to uh, say that Muhammad is abtar. Muhammad cannot have children. Muhammad cannot have boys. And this is a shame for the Arabs. It's an insult. It's an insult. For the Arabs at the time, Muhammad his abtar, abtar, an abtar man, an abtar is a, is a, is someone who cannot have you know boy you know male children, and of course Prophet Muhammad you know whatever male children he had like uh, 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 Abdul, uh, before, uh, Abdullah and Al Qasim they died, he, so he only you know he he was left with you know four girls, the two boys died. So they were insulting him for not being able to have boys. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> Here a name of Allah that was revealed. What name of Allah? The name of Allah Al-Jabbar. Who is Al-Jabbar? Al-Jabbar, sisters, brothers, remember this name of Al-Jabbar. If somebody deceives you, if somebody breaks your heart, when somebody, you know, breaks your heart, you can't go to a doctor and say, Doctor, my heart is broken. I need you to mend my heart. When your heart is broken, call upon Al-Jabbar, the one who mends the heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Jabbar reveals to Prophet Muhammad, Inna a'tainaka al-kawthar. We have blessed you with Al-Kawthar. And Al-Kawthar is a basin in Jannah that was only given to Prophet Muhammad. It's a basin in Jannah. If you were to drink from it, you shall never be thirsty again. The water is sweeter than honey, whiter than milk. 
clearer and whiter than milk and, and sweeter than honey. If you were to drink from it, you shall never feel thirsty again. That was given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That was given to Prophet Muhammad. So instead of having boys, children boys, Allah gave you something better instead. Allah gave you Al-Kawthar. Allahu Akbar. So what do you want? You want boys or you want Al-Kawthar? Give me Al-Kawthar. Huh, sisters, do you want to get married or you want Al-Kawthar? Uh, Shaykh, we want both. Huh? Can we have both? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> huh, brothers, you want to get married or you want al kawthar? Uh, come on, al kawthar there, but here marriage, man, you know? Al kawthar there, but here I want, I want, I want, you know? <laughs> Allahu Akbar. <laughs> you want al kawthar or you want to get married? You want al kawthar or you want a boy? You want al kawthar or you want a son? Inna a'tainaka al kawthar. فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَانْحَرْ إِنَّ شَانِئَكَ هُوَ الْأَبْتَرْ Abu Lahab <laughs> Abu Lahab uh, the uncle of the Prophet Muhammad had two daughters they were married I mean he had two sons and they were married to uh, to uh, the, the daughters of uh, Prophet Muhammad Luqayya and Umm Kaltum Luqayya and Umm Kaltum they were married to the, the, the sons of Abu Lahab at the time it was not prohibited yet at the time it was, it was not prohibited so they were still married to non-believers he came and he made them divorce their, their wives he made them divorce their wives uh, good thing anyways Later on, Allah Azza wa will bless them with something better, with someone who's better. And then came, um, came the other method that they used against Prophet Muhammad is physical abuse. Physical abuse? How? What kind of physical abuse? What would the Prophet do? Would they physically abuse him? Would they hit him? Would they, would they try to uh, persecute him? Torture him? What kind of physical abuse? What did the Prophet do? Did he make dua against them? Did he make dua against them? Against his own family members? How about the Sahaba? What happened to the Sahaba? To the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Ibn Mas'ud. Ibn Mas'ud, he will embrace Islam. What surah would he recite at the Kaaba right there that would enrage Quraysh? And then Bilal, and then Al-Khabbab, and then Ammar, and then Yasir, and then Sumayya. What will happen to them? Islam did not come easy to you and I. Islam came with a lot of sacrifice. Islam came with lots of bloodshed. People who really got killed just because they said La ilaha illallah. What will happen after the uh, that year between the third and the sixth of the Hijrah? And who amongst the elite will embrace Islam and will make a, a change and a turn, a pivotal turn in the life of Islam at the time? Brothers and sisters, insha'Allah ta'ala. Next week, we will carry on the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Next Friday, same time, same place, we'll carry on the seerah of the greatest man ever. The most beloved man to Allah and the greatest man that Allah has ever created. Your Prophet and my Prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thank you sisters and thank you brothers for joining may allah bless you may allah reward you jazakum allah khair we're looking forward to seeing you next week have a great week inshallah ta'ala and see you all friday inshallah jazakum allah khair assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh assalamu alaykum jazakum allah khair thank you so much thank you for attending thank you thank you for being there
جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم السلام عليكم عليكم السلام السلام عليكم those of you who've come in late please go back and watch the session they're all recorded on youtube on instagram on facebook go and sign up you know and and um you know follow me on on youtube as well you will find all my videos even those that are not recorded on facebook and instagram you will find them on youtube inshallah thank you again assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh